Hello everybody and welcome to the Tea with Crema. My name is Chris, I'll be one of your hosts today and I am joined by my best friend Emma. Konbanwa. What is that? That's good evening in Japanese. Oh, look at this, learning all these different words and things one year later. <laughs> one year later. <laughs> And today we also have an extra special guest, her second time on the podcast. Welcome back, Shomaine. What's up? Woohoo! We're so glad to have you back and here on the podcast. This time, a little bit more fun of an episode. The last one was fun, but it was more, you know, it was business. It was money. We were talking real things. <laughs> mm-hmm. This one, we're just having a great time, you know? Yes, I'm excited to be here. Thank y'all for having me again. Woohoo! All right, today's topic, we are talking about our summer adventures. I think all of us spent a lot of time trying out all these different vegan restaurants in Dallas, Fort Worth. And so now we're just going to sit down two months after summer is done. <laughs> and we're really going to sit and give our final reviews and ratings on these vegan restaurants. So, before we get started, we have our tea check. So, Emma, what tea did you bring today? Um, I am drinking, oh, surprise, surprise, another puka. Uh, I'm trying to make my way through this box, y'all. It's the three mint tea. It's a hit. You know, it always it does what it needs to do. It's cute. What about y'all? I am drinking a Texas dirty chai from, uh, it was actually a gift from Chris. I received it yesterday. I have to say it's actually really good. I did not expect it to taste this good. I'm getting a lot of the cinnamon, but I did add a French vanilla creamer to it. So it's, it's Mm. giving me life right now. Ooh, that sounds really good. A dirty chai with some vanilla. So good. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. I did not think to add the French vanilla. I also brought my Independence Coffee Co. Texas Dirty Chai. I ordered it all the way from Houston because I found it originally at a Houston HEB. Checked every Austin area HEB. Checked all the Waco ones and the ones outside of Fort Worth. Could not find it at any of those ones. So I had to order it directly from them because... We went to Brood in Fort Worth and had their chai and it just was not, Mm -hmm. it wasn't really, it wasn't that good. Mm -mm. And I wanted to make sure Shemin got to try like a quality chai before officially deciding on chai teas. Yes. And I have to say, this is much better. Sorry, Fort Worth. Y'all weren't giving. Mm -mm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Now this one has a little, it is like the chai tea base. But then it also has the coffee beans. So that's what makes it the dirty chai. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We might have to put one in your the next package that your mom sends over to Japan. Yes, please. Please do. A little taste of Texas. Oh, you know, I love that. (laughs) But what a wonderful tea check. I'm so glad everyone has some really good teas. Eventually, Emma, you'll finish those puka teas. Eventually. I just need to stop drinking them only for our podcast. But at least they're quality teas. Like puka tea is a quality tea to begin with. So that's... I agree. That's really nice. All right. So jumping into it, we have three restaurants. Now, in all fairness, one of these restaurants, I like I did not eat over the summer. I've just been to it enough historically that I just I just know about it, you know. And so we're looking at Spiral in Fort Worth because we've all been to that Spiral. And then the other one is It's So Vegan. So it's in the style of vegan, and that's in Grand Prairie. And then there is The Vegan House in Dallas. And I forget what that neighborhood is called, but it's definitely in Dallas. But those were the three. First things first, we got to figure out how did we find these three restaurants. So... I feel like I went to Vegan House before y'all, and that's how we found that one. So I heard of it through a friend. They recommended it. We went. I loved it. And then I recommended it to y'all. It's so I found on a list of Black-owned businesses and then recommended. And I don't know how Spiral happened. I've been going to Spiral since like at least my first year in Fort Worth, but I don't remember how. Oh, I think you went to Spiral because you had gone to the Dallas location, if I'm not mistaken. I have not been to the Dallas location. Um, well, we had a vegetarian, we have a vegetarian friend, so maybe she took you, the one in Fort Worth? Maybe. Oh, but also the vegan house is located in Bishop Arts neighborhood. 
yeah, they are very confusing in Dallas. I don't know why they need so many neighborhoods when it's not that big, but it's fine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no shade to Dallas. Dallas is doing what it's doing. <laughs> yeah. My feelings, I actually had to go through all, to all three. I had to go back to Spiral because I have a love, 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 love relationship with their nacho cheese. So I had to go back because that's my favorite nacho cheese. I think all three are like solid choices though in terms of vegan food. You know, I'm not someone who like actively eats vegan food, but like because I'm friends with Chris, I we like to go to places where he has more options than just a salad. I personally liked all three. Did I like one more than the other? Yes. Should I say that now? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think in terms of ranking, right, like Vegan House is just superior. That, I'm just going to put that there. I'm going to put that right there and just like let it sit there. You guys can agree or disagree. I think they're all just like solid food choices, though. What about you, Shemaine? What do you think? Are you like vegetarian or vegan or? I am now pescatarian. Just recently this year, Brian and I, my husband, we just started like we made it a New Year's resolution that we were going to cut out meat three times a week. And I was like, you know what? I really don't need to have it. And he was like, well, I do. And I was like, OK, well, I'm not going to cook with it. So we're going to not eat meat. <laughs> so, and so since about January 17th of this year till now, we have not had anything outside of fish. So we are pescatarian. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Congratulations. That's a huge like Thank you. Especially with your family of like three young kids like Mhm. Mm like that is such a cool. <laughs> that's so cool. Okay, sorry. Thank, Keep on going. Thank my you. Bad. No, it's okay. <laughs> um so for me, I feel very similar to you. I think that before Spiral was the only thing I knew, so I loved it. It was amazing. It was top tier. But then I went to Vegan House and it opened my eyes to so much more. So like you, I think I ranked them with Vegan House being number one. And then Spiral would be my number two. And then It's So number three. That would be my solid. I would agree. That's my solid ranking. But that's not to say because there are some things about Vegan House that kind of irritate me. But mm -hmm. yes, for sure. Not on the food end. The food end there is it's worth it. It's off the charts. Yeah. It is. Even for, and I mean, I felt like the food was good even for non-vegan individuals. Like, it was just good. Yeah. Whereas I feel like Spiral, it, you kind of always know in the back of your mind that you're eating vegan food. Mm -hmm. And then It's So, they were doing their best. Yeah. I think It's So, though, like, as much as, I think in terms of the three of them... I don't know if it was like the day that we had gone, but I do like their food options. I will say that their menu, I think, is interesting. But yes, I do agree with that rating as well, with Vegan House being number one, Spiral number two, and It's So at number three. Mm -hmm. First impressions in terms of like the locale. I hate the parking at Spiral. <laughs> I don't like this parking at Spiral or at Vegan House. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they're both in neighborhoods. Right. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't like that. Ding. Off of them. Yeah. 0.5 off. Yep. But I will say Vegan Houses was a little worse than Spirals. <laughs> <laughs> and then also It's So, I mean, they had like a parking lot, but it was still kind of tight. Mm -hmm. So I guess in terms of parking lots or in terms of parking, It's So had the best parking because it was like mm -hmm. in an actual business center. Mm -hmm. And it's close to Ikea. <laughs> But I will say, because, you know, I heard vegan house, and then I, like, rolled up to a literal house. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. It threw me. It truly was like, oh, I was not ready for a literal house. Yeah. But presentation-wise, I mean, I would say, like, Spiral and Vegan House both have some character to their restaurants, which is really nice. Mm. Spirals a lot, like the spacing was nicer in the restaurant itself. So I don't really ever feel like I'm like sitting on top of someone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I feel like even on a non crowded day, Vegan House, it gets really crowded. Like it just feels a little claustrophobic. Yes. Because it's somebody's house. Like it feels like you're <laughs> in someone's front room and their mud room and then their living room is where they, where you order. First impressions, I would have to give it to Spiral. Mm. Like, first impressions, I was like, it It just looked really nice. It feels like a diner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could I could see that. In terms of, like, it's a restaurant, like, I know this is a restaurant. I think in terms of, like, the, the sh not the shtick, I don't want to say the shtick of it, but, like, what's the word? Is that, word is that the word shtick? Like, 
I think in terms of like, oh, it's a literal house. Like I would give it to vegan house because it's like, it's cute. It's like kitsch, oh, kitsch, kitschy. Is that the word? You know, it's like, that's part of its vibe. It's like, it's called vegan food house. It's in somebody's house. It's a blue house. Like it's just this cute little house in this neighborhood. I feel bad for their neighbors, but <laughs> what about you, Shemaine? I think I would have to say also vegan house. The day we went, it was super crowded, but I think had we gone and then it was not as busy, I think my first impression would have been even better. But I do like the coziness of it. It's like it is someone's house. It is comfort food. And like my kids went there with us and they had no idea that they were not eating chicken. So it was really good just to see what their thoughts were in that environment and to have that vegan food and them not even know that they were eating vegan food. So I think that was the best first impression for me. Because they still are eating meat actively. Yes, they are. So they literally showed up and was like, what is this? This is great. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I think that's the best part about (laughs) Vegan House, though, is that you like you don't know, right? If someone were to do takeout for me and they were just like, oh, here, have this burger and I ate it, I wouldn't know. You know, like I wouldn't know that it was going to be something that's not what they're saying it is. So in terms of the ordering process, I will say, I don't know, I guess it just depends on what kind of ordering do you like. Spiral is like a diner. So you have a waitress or a waiter that comes up to you and takes your order. You know, it's so you have to go up to the front counter and then they bring you your food. Same thing with Vegan House. Nah, Vegan House was not. Mm -mm. The ordering, like the whole, that process was not, it was not good from start to finish. It was not. It was horrible. (laughs) It was not good. First of all, I see where it could be organized because you're supposed to scan a QR code that's tied to a specific table, Uh which I interpreted as if I order from this table, they'll bring it to this table. Oh, you're right. They don't bring it to you. They call you, right? (laughs) They call you, which literally only works on those days when it's not so crowded. Because that day I went with Shemaine, it was so loud that half the time I was like, was that us? Mm Mm-hmm. Did they call us? Was that us? And we were sitting right next to where they have the food, where you pick it up. And we were still struggling to hear it. And then the ordering with it being online. So you can't even like talk to the person to get recommendations. There's no, Mm. there's no way to interact with someone. So especially if you're new to A, that restaurant or B, vegan food in general, there's no one, it doesn't feel like there's anyone to really talk to and go through your options with. And then... The app was, I mean, it's just a site, so it it's kind of a lot. There's so many options that it's overwhelming, actually. So many. There are still... Yeah. I was discovering stuff as I was going with y'all. Like, the menu just kept going. It's kind of, yeah, it is a little clunky, I will say mm-hmm. that. The app is not well done yet. I'm wondering, though, if it's, like, due to COVID, you know, that they started this, like, process, and that's why even on the tables it says, like, do not move from your table, so maybe in the past, that was something they did. Well, I'd like for that to resume if that was the case. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. calling out the names was not the move. Because like at Itso, it was fine. Like we went up to the counter, you ordered, and then they brought it to you. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I don't know. Ideally, I still like Spiral the most. Same. In terms of the ordering process, it works. It does work. And that's what we're accustomed to. It's like a restaurant. So you order your food, then you pay, which is normal but at it's so it's like you order your food you pay then you have a seat and then at vegan house it was more so okay let me find a table first of all and then when i get there how do i order okay i scan this qr code then i order and i pay online and then i have to wait for them to call my name for my food and we found that there was an order limit. Mm-hmm. At where? At Vegan House? There's an order mm-hmm. limit? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? We, like, Shemaine was only able to order a certain number of items in an order. What? Yeah. And it was my whole family going, so. And so I will say for that part, like, when you're ordering just, for. like, naturally you're already going to have. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. And I forgot what the limit was, but I definitely remember, like, you got to a point and it was like, oh, can't order anything. And so then, like, Brian had to start ordering some of the stuff. Yep. Which, like, you know, thankfully you guys, like, stuck it out to eat the food. But I know some people who, like, would have immediately been frustrated and just walked out. Right? Like, that's, like, part of the customer experience right there. So, ooh, interesting. Yeah, I will say that I do typically like Spiral's ordering process just because I also like interacting with with the staff that works at a restaurant because I feel like I can get Mm -hmm. a little bit 
more insight. So yeah, I think in that case, yeah, I would probably rank it Spyro It's So Vegan House in terms of ordering process. For sure. Okay, moving on. Meal presentation and taste, because we know it all matters. That like the taste is like, that's going to be the one thing. You can overlook a not great ambiance. You can overlook an ordering process if the taste is there in most cases. I agree. So, Shemaine, how would you how would you order meal presentation and taste? I think it would stay the same, honestly. Vegan house, spiral, it's so. I, I would agree, but like also very clearly vegan house. Yes. Yeah, it's not like, oh, they're like they're not toe to toe. Like no, it's Mm-mm. like vegan house is number one, coming in second, like still doing a decent job. It gets the job done, it's consistent, spiral. Again, mm-hmm. I have only been to Itso once, so maybe I need to give it another chance. But yeah, just off of my first time at Vegan House, like it already blew it out of the water. What did you order when you guys went to Vegan House and Itso? I ordered the, um, I think they were jackfruit tacos. They were actually really good. And we had a couple of appetizers, Brussels sprouts and cauliflower. It was so good. It was so good. Oh, that sounds so good. I don't even want to hear about these Brussels sprouts because when Chris and I went, <laughs> they were out. They didn't have any. No, he was, like, he was talking of these Brussels. He was talking of these Brussels sprouts the entire ride to Dallas, which is already an hour, guys. So I was over here hyped about these Brussels sprouts, and he's getting there. You know, he's he's scrolling, scrolling through because you know the Brussels sprouts are all the way at the bottom, and he gets there and he goes. <gasps> They're out for the day. And I was like, we just got here, but they just opened. How are they out? <laughs> but the cauliflower did hit. The cauliflower was very good. But what did y'all get when y'all went? When I went to Vegan House, I got, I don't even know. It was so good, though. It was a big eggplant sandwich. It was a fried eggplant sandwich. <laughs> That's what I got, right, Chris? Um mm-hmm. And I think it had bacon, bacon on it, which was also just like a nice hit. I just like, I always really like the fake bacon. I think it's very nice. Um, when I had gone to Itso, I had the nachos and the Philly cheesesteak that had, um, mushrooms, not seitan, like how, or seitan, however you say that, how Spiral does it. And then whenever I go to Spiral, I literally get the same burger every single time. Their bacon ranch cheeseburger is so delicious. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I ordered. So I'm normally like, I like to try their, their sandwiches to see how good they can make the sandwiches. What do you get? What did you get, Chris? I feel like you try everything though. So I don't know if this is like a easy question for you to answer. Well, <laughs> I have been to Vegan House over five times. In fact, I want to say even before I took Shemaine, I had been the week before. And then I went like a week or two after with Emma. And then I'd been even before that. And so I've had a lot of their stuff, like their the mac and cheese burger. I've had their the kitchen bowl that they have, the Parmesan wing appetizer, the Brussels sprouts. There was one thing that I did have. I can't remember what it was, but it was not my favorite. It had something to do with some mushrooms and it was just... It was a sandwich, but it was too sour. Like, I just felt like it was like a chicken-esque kind of sandwich, but it was just, it was too sour. I didn't really like it. Did did I tell you that Isaac actually went back to Vegan House in that little, like, he came to Texas to fly to LA and he, like, had taken my mom to go because they were going somewhere. And he was like, we need to go to this vegan restaurant. And my mom's like, what? And he, like, went and... (laughs) That's how much he enjoyed it, was that he, like, decided to go on his own. Dang, the betrayal. The betrayal, man. But How'd your mom like it? She liked it. She said that it was a little heavy. Which, yes. Like, you know, it's like, it's soul food. But I felt like, yes, it's heavy, but I feel like I felt, maybe psychologically, I felt better because it's, like, vegan. <laughs> so I, was like, yes. I think that's what it was. Because it's heavy. It is. Yeah. But it's so good. For me... They're three very clearly different tiers. I agree. And it so, for me, was very much at the bottom. It wasn't even memorable. I don't remember what I got when I went with you. Mm-hmm. And when I went with Emma, I remember what I got because it was bad. And not even like, oh, maybe this would be better another time. No, like the Google reviews have revealed that it is always bad. <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah, I agree with that. Um, it so is definitely... 
my least favorite. I do remember what I got, though. <laughs> um, I think, well, kind of. I want to say it was like a um, uh, Frito pie, kind of, but not mm. really. Mm. But it was pretty good. I want to give them credit because they tried. It was it was okay. Yeah. It'd be a really good option in like if you lived in that area. Yes, I agree. Yeah. But for me, coming from Fort Worth, if I'm gonna drive that far, I would just go ahead and finish out the journey and go to a vegan house personally. Yep. <laughs> Stop by at IKEA, get the vegan meatballs. <laughs> you know? Because it is, I guess, yes, it is close to Ikea. So I guess if I was in that area, I would know, oh, yeah, it's those over here. Like, it's fine. But then I would also, I don't know if I would like, hmm, that's part of it. I don't know if I would recommend that to any more friends. Oh. Right. I may just find a Sonic on the way and get some cheese sticks or something. She said the I'm cheese just saying, like, I mean. Because <laughs> it just, I don't, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't good either. Yeah. I mean, part of it is comparing it to Vegan House, but also is... It's comparing it to, at this point, there are certainly more options as well that I've had. Mm-hmm. I've had pla- like vegan places in Atlanta at this point. I've had vegan places in LA. So it's not even just these three places that I've only ever been to. There's other options that I have had. Right. So I also know that it so just wasn't as good overall. Mm-hmm. It, to me, just felt very home cook in a restaurant. Yeah. That's a fair assessment. It just It's so far one of the lower ones. And then Vegan House is up there. Just like with all of the places that I've been to, Vegan House is really up there. Mm, and then again, Spiral just has that like, you always know that you're eating vegan food at Spiral. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's bad, but you always know somewhere the little voice is like, mm, mm, cashew oh, cheese. <laughs> That cheese is good. It's so good. Like I know, it is. I know it's not, you know, like vegan house mac and cheese, right? It does not taste like it's like fake mac and cheese. Spiral mac and cheese, like it gets congealed a little bit when it sits for a little too long. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, it's vegan mac and cheese. But man, that it's so mac and cheese, it's like so yummy. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, Vegan House is very heavy food. Mm-hmm. You gotta go hungry. You do. And even then, like, I just, every time that I leave there, I feel okay because it's vegan, but also part of me is like, ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, and you need a nap. Like, you better be ready to head home and hit yes. the pillow. It feels like a Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner every time. Yes. <laughs> and it doesn't help that I, because I know every time I go, I get all these appetizers, too. <laughs> So that doesn't help <laughs> at all. So then I'm like, okay, great. Give me the cauliflower. Give me the Brussels sprouts. I'll have the bowl, the kitchen bowl. <laughs> like, I'm like out here ordering three or four things. But part of it is because it's so far away. If I'm going to go, yeah. I'm going to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So I, I agree. It is, it's just a little heavy, but it's great. So It is so good. Mm. We do have to talk about, this is a big one. It's the cost of each of them. Because for me personally, I've always found that vegan restaurants are just a little higher. Which makes no sense. I mean, yes, it makes sense. I get it. Good quality food. But at the same time, meat is a lot more expensive. (laughs) Why is it so much cheaper to go to a restaurant and get a hamburger that's made out of beef versus a hamburger that's made out of eggplant? I guess it's because a lot goes into disguising it i guess um making it like an impossible burger like what all do they have to do to make it impossible or (laughs) Or beyond or beyond (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh my gosh but i don't feel like any of these do you feel like any of these were like over overpriced like i think vegan house is a little high they are expensive, but they are also top tier. So you get what you pay for. Yes. So I would definitely pay more there. Um, however, if it so tried to match their prices, like you just can't, like, no, I would never go back. I would not recommend to a friend. <laughs> um, so I feel that each place is priced very well for their menu and their quality of food. I agree. Yeah. Even though, yes, I do agree that, like, it's kind of, it's unfair to, you know, vegans and vegetarians who have to pay extra to get, like, good tasting food. I think mm-hmm. that that's, like, crazy in itself. But again, I'm going to give credit where credit's due. And of course, you know, pay fair wages to 
whoever needs to be, you know, the chefs and the everyone that works there. But yeah, that is, I think, yeah, I think you're exactly right. They pay, you pay for what you get. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. Any additional notes that we would like to add about these restaurants? Try it out. Try it out and come on the show and let us know. If you have to dispute It's So Representatives, this is a call out to you for you to come onto our show and tell us what's going on. <laughs> Vegan House, if you want to give us a coupon, please just use <laughs> TTWK20 to get 20% off your next meal. Because <laughs> I will be there. I will be there in a heartbeat. And then Spiral, <laughs> Spiral you just keep doing you. You know, you're solid. You just keep yes keep on keeping on <laughs> mm-hmm. i will say unrelated to these three restaurants i'm trying to find the name of it but there was on my way out of atlanta this last time there was a vegan restaurant that i tried trash oh see it sounds like you need to write a review as someone who personally reads them yes you know sometimes these reviews can make or break you <laughs> oh. yeah they can i found it mm, because i was writing a review on it and it was not a good review. It was a two-star review. Oh. And it was called Full Taste Vegan Restaurant in Atlanta. Mm. Oh, Honestly, no. two stars was generous. Wow. See, look at this. The food here was fine if the price point matched the quality of the food oh. received. Christopher, post. Don't be scary. Mm. Post. <laughs> mm-hmm. The people need to know. Yes. So that was my unrelated note i just was really outraged at that restaurant especially after spending all summer eating actually like really good vegan food and then just end up there i was just like (laughs) dumb Mm -hmm. okay so this is it imagine these are our final yelp reviews like we're about to publish this for the world and it's a little five star review maybe a little note if you're feeling it what would you give each one we'll start with spiral I would give Spiral, because I'm very generous and I'm very, like, giving. So I would give them a four out of five. They're solid. I mean, you you know what you're going to get when you go in there. It's a vegan food, so it, you know, you get that. And the atmosphere is nice. I feel like you see a good variety, diverse amount of people in there. I think they would get a four from me. I agree. I was like at a 3.5 slash 4. It only gets a 3.5 because I hate parallel parking. <laughs> so that has nothing to do with the restaurant. Uh, you're right. You're right. Based on the food. Oh, well. Based on, but you know what? But Melt Ice Cream is right down the street. And then you have Avoca right across the street. And then you got Great Harvest. So I think that gives it a 4. The neighborhood is cute. I really personally yeah. like Magnolia Street. And all mm-hmm. of that that it has to offer. So I think it gets a four. But yes, a 3.5 because I cannot park. But that's not a them thing. That's a me thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to give them, because I do, I really value consistency. Again, that feeling of I know that if I go here, I can get something pretty good and worth it. Mm-hmm. And so I would give them a four and a half out of five. Ooh, it's, not, it's not a stellar place. In the sense of like, I'm blown away, especially since having more experiences in vegan food. But mm-hmm. I will say like, as one of the first places, they were really good. And yeah. I think they've stayed consistent. And so four and a half, but I don't think you can give half stars. So I'd give them a good four, nice. like a leaning up four. Mm-hmm. So that would be my spiral rating. What about oh. it? So it's so I think. Just taking it all in, reflecting on my experience there. I would give them a three. They're solid in the sense of like the area. Like as you mentioned earlier, if you're in Grand Prairie and you know that this is a vegan restaurant, you want to go out to eat, this is a decent place. Like I would go there. I would take a friend just to see what they think. And the food is okay. So I would definitely give them a three overall. I agree. I think a solid, I like, yeah, it's a solid three. Three out of five, like, that's, like, average. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but again, like, in terms of memorability, like, what like what Chris said, I, I'm pretty sure that's what I had ordered. I know for sure I ordered the nachos, and I did like their cheese in that. Um, that is a big marker for me is your vegan cheese, clearly, as I've been mentioning all episode. So yeah, I do remember that, but I don't remember what I like actually ate. So yeah. What about you, Chris? I gotta give them a three, only because I've had worse. 
Mm-hmm. And because originally I was going to give them a two, but I also, that first time it was unmemorable and the second time was just bad. And so for me, that's not necessary. Like that's not, it's very inconsistent. And clearly their reviews consistently rate whatever I got as not good. And so part of it is like, okay, cool. Are you like taking feedback and adapting your menu to upgrade? And it, I don't know if the reviews keep coming in that the food is not good. I don't know why you keep leaving it the same, but mm-hmm. I don't own a restaurant. I don't know. So ugh, I give them a three. I'm leaning two. So it's a, definitely a three leaning two because it just, it wasn't consistent, but the price point is good. I don't know if I would recommend to any more friends though. <laughs> Maybe if there was like, literally we were going to Ikea specifically <laughs> and we were like, Hey, there's a place right around the literal corner. Let's try it out. And then I would not get the chicken fried steak again. And I wouldn't tell them to. In fact, I tell them not to get it. But it, it's a very specific type of recommendation. Okay. What about Vegan House? Vegan House. I know y'all said we can't give half stars. <laughs> but I would give them a four and a half. Mostly due to like the parking the atmosphere if you go at like a peak time in the ordering process. Uh, but the food quality is definitely a five. But all the other things that play into that have me at a 4.5 with them. Yeah. I think that's a solid assessment as well. I think if we're going solely on food, a six out mm-hmm. of five. Like yeah, seven out of five. Like it's like over, yeah. right? But then again... Like, we have to go through all these, like, hoops and hurdles to get that six Mm -hmm. out of five food, which can, you know, you have a big family coming in. There's a limiting order. There's the ambiance. It's crowded sometimes. Mm -hmm. Isaac and I were sitting at these high tables with Chris, and I was like, Christopher, we're going to break these chairs. We got to move tables (laughs) if we want this chair to – it was wobbling, you know? But I agree. 4.5. Solid 4.5 out of 5, but a 5 out of 5 on food, for sure. Yes. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. I would definitely, if I put it, like, if I were going to put it on Yelp, I would give them their five stars. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, all of these things would be in the review. Almost Mm -hmm. like a warning for people, in a sense. And not, like, a bad warning of just, like, hey, just be ready. Because, like, yeah, logistically, these things can be such hurdles that I could definitely see how that would. Had it been, I feel like, just one more challenge it definitely would have like, okay, this is actually just, it's past the point of the food being worth it. It's truly just annoying yeah. Mm-hmm. because yeah, between the crowded and the parking and the ordering logistics, like it just had literally one more thing not gone right. Mm-hmm. Easy knockdown. Yeah. But I feel like experienced people who have been there, they kind of know. So I did see a lot of like pickup orders coming in. If you are going to go eat there, I would recommend carpooling like don't have three different people coming in three different cars like carpool order ahead if you can and then eat your food there if the tables are available but those would be some recommendations that I would have because the food is amazing and I wouldn't want somebody to miss out on that opportunity or that experience because they can't find a parking spot or because it's overcrowded Mm -hmm. I would even take it out on a picnic like now that the weather's more manageable a bit more friendly mm-hmm. i could imagine like doing like what you said just pick up and then go somewhere else and still yeah. eating it because it, yeah mm-hmm. it's really good it just you gotta kind of have to learn it a little bit yeah <laughs> there's a learning curve there so mm-hmm. not for the faint of heart <laughs> <laughs> well i appreciate us trying out all these vegan restaurants so you know just a review for everyone i am a vegetarian so I'm not a vegan, but I do appreciate a good vegan restaurant and experience. Mm-hmm. Same. Because that's my thing. Anyone can eat vegan food. Yes. Mm-hmm. Before we end our episode, we still have our... Rapid Fire Question! Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> so even with our guests, Emma has decided that she is going first at all times. So... <laughs> the time because i can't embarrass myself any more than i already have but before we started the episode we were talking about incentives for teachers so christopher as a former teacher 
Shemaine as a current head of head teacher, teacher lead, teacher boss, <laughs> and myself as just showing up in the classroom. Some days. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the best incentive an administrator can give to a teacher? I would have to say just quickly off the top of my head, a duty free something like I need my time. Ooh. Please give me a duty free lunch. Plus a duty free recess. Give me thirty extra minutes on my planning. Yes, and I feel like that's such an easy that's an easy give right there. I will say, okay, sorry, not to brag, but my school at the end of our faculty meetings, there's this wheel that goes around, like it's a it's a spinny wheel, and it has everyone's name on it. So then it spins, and then one of the prizes is actually someone gets to get like a duty free. They get to choose the duty, and then the principal will actually go and do it for them. That's awesome. Yeah. And so people are like, that one, I don't like that one. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, y'all clearly have not taught in the States. Exactly. Where you have a duty every single day. And this is like a huge, like, first of all, don't be rude. I was like, don't bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher, what do you think? I would have to agree. Like, time is my love language. So literally, that was it. I think one of my favorite things ever was when we we won the gift of time. I, either my first or second year and we went to a cafe and like got to sit down and eat together and just like enjoy our time were we a little late on the comeback just a little bit but <laughs> it was worth it i do remember like pulling up to the front i was like okay y'all go get the kids go get the kids i'll park the car <laughs> <laughs> but it was still again that's a whole it was a whole experience like that mm -hmm. that sense of camaraderie we got to eat together we got to like rush back to the school together it was just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yes i 100 percent agree just the gift of time yes my favorite incentive is free lunch <laughs> <laughs> i love it i mean you know if i don't have to cook or if i don't have to go get school lunch and i get a free lunch i mean why not i think as a high school teacher we definitely have a lot less duties as like elementary school teachers like in texas i didn't have any duties so coming here and then having a duty i was like what is this i don't understand why do i need to watch the children they can watch themselves <laughs> so i didn't understand that whole like duty issue that like i remember chris was like man like duty free like there's no such thing i was like man i got a planning i got a lunch i got a this so but yes i will always accept a free lunch <laughs> <laughs> not to be that okay. person i enjoyed the lunches but they weren't always vegetarian yeah. lunches exactly oh yeah true 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 true, true, mm -hmm. true it's okay i know my school got way better at it because i kept getting i kept making sad faces <laughs> every time it was only salad and everyone like they started feeling bad and so now we're better but i will say i just kept making sad faces when they'd be like oh for teacher appreciation we, we got barbecue <laughs> <laughs> the jollies get the mac and cheese or y'all and get the meat mm. <laughs> so it's fine it'd be like that well for my rapid fire question in honor of the month of october uh what was the best halloween costume you've ever worn Great question. I take pride in my Halloween costumes, honestly. I'm someone who goes all out. My mom used to make our Halloween costumes growing up. She, like, made a whole Barney for my sister because she loved Barney. Ooh. Yeah, like, it had a tail and everything. Like, she kept it for me, but then I wasn't into Barney, so it was, like, a really sad one-time use <laughs> costume for my sister. <laughs> and then there was that, you know, like, that time when, like, kids were really into being, like, with the poodle skirts. She made my sister and I our own poodle skirts. Uh, yeah, my mom was like, she was all about that life. Okay, sorry. My favorite though <laughs> that I've ever done. <laughs> Isaac and I went as, you know, in the in uh, Despicable Me, the little girl that's like, it's so fluffy, I'm gonna die. <laughs> yes. So I was the unicorn and Isaac was the little girl. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> I and I made it. his costume. Yeah, and I like made his costume so he looked like the little girl. It was so cute. And then that is yeah, it was the whole thing. I appreciate my husband for being very on board with all of my crazy ideas. <laughs> wow. Okay. I uh, phone it in for costumes more often than not. So I've only ever tried like twice like really tried for a costume. So I guess my favorite was that one time that I was like a mean girl's bunny. Mm. Yes! <laughs> yes, bunny! Back in college, you know? It was, that's all I got. I had the little, what are those things called? The ears and the tail. Mm -hmm. And then I just dressed in all white and I was like, okay, I did it. 
<laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> what about you, Shemaine? If we didn't really have a lot of money growing up, so my best costume, I was my grandma one year. I went in her closet and I was like, I'm a bitch. <laughs> I'm about to get your wig. I'm about to get your your church skirt and your stockings. Oh, no, you, did not just, you did not just take her wig. I did. Shemaine. Shemaine. So I was my grandma. She said she she said she went in and grabbed her wig and her church skirt. Oh, not the church skirt. What's your What's your grandma's name? Her name is Iris. Oh, Grandma Iris. I'm so sorry she made disrespected you like that. I'm sure it was great, though. Do you have pictures? I don't don't have pictures. pictures. No pictures. But it was great, though. I loved it. (laughs) The kids knew what I was. They knew I was a grandma, so. That's all that matters. (laughs) That's all that matters. The costume executed flawlessly. Yep. (laughs) so good oh my god i love that oh i wish i did more for halloween but yeah growing up with not a lot of money and two other siblings it just Mm -hmm. we just phoned it in half the time yep Mm -mm. i appreciate that okay my question has nothing to do with either of those things i just it just came to me while i was driving home from work one day so my question is what is your favorite type of pasta noodle Ooh. Farfalli. <gasps> wow. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The bow tie. I love a good farfalli noodle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to say a panay. Mm, yes. Okay. Solid. Okay. I see both of these. These are wonderful. I'm glad no one was like elbows. I, <laughs> I like. Salad macaroni. I like. <laughs> Itty bitties. Mm. I like looking at cavatappi. I love a good cavatappi. I don't like eating it because it's kind of like. I feel like they play with you. Like it's the noodle like swirls around. It's like, oh, you thought you had me. So it's kind of annoying. But I do love a good shell, like the medium shells, because I feel like they always Mm. hold a little bit of the flavor in them. And then you eat them and it's just like, ooh, flavor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Good one. Just a random. See, look at that. Boom. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. I do like a good cavatappi though. But I understand because when you go to stab it, it's like swirls out of the <laughs> No, literally. You thought. Like that. You thought you were going to eat me. Not today, Satan. <laughs> okay. Well, Shemaine, thank you so much, for, A, for going on the, all of these journeys and adventures with me to these restaurants. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed them. Thank you for inviting me. This is dragging you all around the Metroplex, trying to try all these places. <laughs> with my kids and my husband. <laughs> it's okay. Also, shout out to the Wilson family as a whole. Because that, is a, that is a journey to have to travel with everybody to the places that we need to go. <laughs> On on Christopher's whip, you know, it's not like it's like, oh yeah, let me just like me and my friend. No, everybody has to come. So. <laughs> We're all there. It's gonna be great. So I appreciate y'all for coming with <laughs> yes. me. Yes. Whoop whoop. I think it was Absolutely. you know, vegan house was worth it. So I'm glad it I sure would go was. there again. But yes. In any case, Shemaine, did you want to do a plug for Ivy Grace? Yeah, you can shop with me at Ivy Grace Boutique dot. Net, or you can follow me on Instagram at Ivy Grace underscore boutique, or follow me on Facebook at Ivy Grace Boutique 2020. Ooh, girl, I got all the social medias. Y'all better find her. Emma, where can people find the podcast? You can find our podcast on Instagram and Twitter at The Tea with Crema. You can also listen to our podcast anywhere that you stream your podcast, as well as YouTube. If you'd like to buy us a cup of tea, you can Venmo us at The Tea with Crema. We hope to see you next time. Bye!